Looking back, could I have foregone the last week of data so that I could upload this in 2023 versus 2024? Maybe. But you know what they say. Hindsight's 2023. Ah. Welcome and welcome back everybody, Tabletop Toki here, and in today's video, I'm going to share with you the best games from 2023. Now, this list is based on cold, hard facts, so there is absolutely no disputing it whatsoever. Anybody who tells you differently is wrong. <laughs> but really though, in 2023, I played 703 unique games, 159 of which were new to me. So how can you really say what the best games are. For this list today, I broke it down into four different categories, which are the number of people I played the game with, number of different locations, number of plays, and number of hours spent playing. I figured that this would be the best way to cover a wide variety of games that shine for many different reasons. So without further ado, we're gonna get started with our first category here, which is number of different people played with. I first had the pleasure of playing our honorable mention on this list up at Werfel & Zucker in Hamburg, Germany. And since then have been able to play it with a total of 19 different people last year. And that is Mata from Designers Sophia Wagner. This is a push your luck game where you are placing out cacti that have different amounts of fruit on them that your lemur is collecting. The more fruit you have, the better chance you'll have at scoring more points. However, if you ever get to a high enough card that you cannot play a same value or higher card, you bust and lose all of your points. This is a really fun push your luck game. I love the theme and the art. It's very accessible, hence having played it with 19 different people last year. So this one was technically in the fourth place on this list, but we'll see why here in a little bit. Number two on the list is a game that was brand new to me later in the year, and I have had the pleasure of introducing it to 22 different people since then, and that is Call of the Wild. This is a real-time bluffing game where you are going to be yelling animal noises at each other, trying to find animals to match up with and mate with, or are you being tricky and making the call of the animal smaller than you so that you can eat it? It is fast, it is chaotic, it is crazy, but there is a surprising amount of strategy once you get the hang of it. Even though this game might not be everybody's cup of tea, it absolutely leaves an impression, so it is one that I'm more than happy to bring along with me and share with anybody who's down to give it a try. So that is in the number two slot with 22 different people played with Call of the Wild. And coming in at number one is a game that is a classic. You've probably heard of it. I certainly had, but I had honestly written it off because I thought it was going to be a nonsensical game. Coming in at number one for number of people played with 24 different people shared with is Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. If you're not familiar with this game, it is a speed game where each person goes down the line saying the name of the item and flipping a card. If they ever match, you have to slap the deck and whoever's last will take the cards, which is a bad thing. There are also a couple of fun extra little characters like the gorilla, groundhog, and the narwhal where you have to do a certain pose anytime it comes out. This is just a classic fun speed game. I definitely didn't give it enough credit before I had played it. I found that it's a really great icebreaker at conventions and events or a great end of the night game when everybody's just feeling a little slap happy. So with 24 different people played with, that is our number one for this category. Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. The next category are games that I've played in a variety of different places. And I have two honorable mentions in this category. The first being a classic of Cabo. 2023 was the first time I had the pleasure of playing Cabo. It is a memory game where you have four cards in front of you and you're trying to swap them out to get them as close to zero as possible. If you think you have the lowest cards, you can wager at any point and call Cabo. If you're correct, you get zero points for the round, which is a good thing. But if you're incorrect, you have to add 10 to the sum of the cards in front of you. I played a couple different games that build on this idea from Cabo this past year, but I found that the classic version really is the best in my opinion. I do love the deluxe version though with the really cute art where you're looking for a unicorn named Cabo. We joked about having two decks being deluxe, but it really is when you can just play back to back and you don't have to pause and shuffle in between. Honorable mention number two, I've also played in four different locations and that is Panic Lab. This is a speed game where you're going to be trying to catch an alien that's escaped from the lab. You'll roll dice to determine the color, shape, and pattern of the alien, which sounds very easy, but it's directional. So you have to take into account which test chamber it escaped from, if it's going clockwise or counterclockwise. There are different mutations that the alien can go through. Again, being that it's a real-time game, this might not be everybody's cup of tea, but it is definitely one that I've loved to bring around with me and show to people. Coming in at number three with five different locations is a game that is near and dear to me and to our channel, and that is Railroad Inc. If you're not familiar with 
Railroad Inc. It is a roll and write game where you're trying to make a map of the best highways and railroads. There are many different expansions and mini expansions that you can add into that, a challenge board, a solo board, big boards. It's really helps to keep this one fresh and on the table. This is a game that's really stood the test of time for me. If y'all have been here, you know that it's one of the first games that I had a lot of coverage for here on the channel. Even here all these years later in 2023, it's still a game that I love to bring around and show to other people, which is why it's number three with five different locations played. Coming in at number two with five locations played as well is Wine the Film, also known as Photograph from Sashi and Sashi. This game takes classic elements of drafting and set collection, but packages them in an ingenious and beautiful way. Unlike with a lot of other games in Photograph, you are not able to change the order of the cards in your hand freely. So you have to be very careful about which cards you pick up in which order because they will then more than likely be played in a similar fashion. This is a portable game that I love bringing places, especially to conventions and board game events, because it really plays on some of those classic elements of board games like drafting and set collection, which are present in a lot of entry level games that got people into the hobby. So it's one that I found that a lot of people have really enjoyed getting to experience. And again, very portable. So I've been able to bring it to five different locations this past year and share it. And speaking of portable with six different locations, Number one on this list is Smoke and Mirrors from Button Shy Games. This is a bluffing and deduction game where you are going to be playing cards that represent magic tricks, trying to one up the person that went before you. So you'll have a series of different cards and you'll select up to three of them and play them face down. The first person's cards have to equal one, then two, three, four, etc. Now that may seem very random, but each of the different types of cards has a different back on it. For example, all of the green cards are value one, except there's one special card, which is the mirror, which can copy one or two cards that you play it with. All the different cards have different denominations such as that. So there's a little bit of math and deduction you have to do there. This is a very compact game. Again, it takes bluffing and deduction and condenses them down in a very clever way based on the size of it and the amount of enjoyability. It's no wonder that I've been able to play this at six different locations. It's always in my bag, even if I'm not going to a board game specific location that is smoke and mirrors. Our next category are based on the number of times the game has been played. In the number three slot with 10 plays, we have Rosetta The Lost Language. This is a cooperative game where one person will be acting as the author and the rest of the players will be experts. So the author's job is to take a symbol card and based on the art on the inspiration card, come up with a meaning for that symbol in this made up language. As the game progresses, the experts will guess different words that they think the symbol could mean. And the author will be tasked with drawing symbols based on, again, that card and that initial iconography that represent those words. So it's really a language building game. It's very unique. It's got elements of deduction that do really make you feel like you're an archaeologist because you're looking at all the different symbols and trying to figure out who were these people? What was their way of life? What's important to them? What would they have written about? How would they have represented it? It's been a really unique experience getting to play this one. And at 10 plays, it's definitely one that I've played multiple times throughout the year. Number two on this list is an abstract game for two players called Boop. I first played Boop in 2023 after some hesitation because I thought, wow, that sounds so simple. You just have to get three cats in a row and you win. <laughs> But the trick is they all start as kittens and they have to be upgraded to cats. Not only that, when you place a piece, you don't just boop and move your opponent's pieces, but your own as well. So you really have to be strategic about how you set up your kittens and cats on the board. And being that kittens are small, they can't boop cats. Only cats can boop cats, but they can also boop kittens. So it's a really cute theme. It's a very streamlined abstract game, super easy to teach, very easy to get to the table. And one that I'm very glad that I I got to play 11 times last year. And coming in in the number one slot for plays is a game that I got to play 26 times. <laughs> you probably won't be surprised once you see what it is. It has been an absolute blast playing this one. This was also the technical number three spot on the number of people played with as I've played it with 20 different people this past year. And that is Similo from Horrible Guild. Similo is another deduction game where you have one person as the clue giver. There will be a grid of cards, let's say for example, Fables, laid out with particular characters and the clue giver will be giving clues using a different deck like 
animals. If they put a card standing upright, it means that it has something similar to the target card that players are trying to select. And if they put it tilted to the side, it means that it's different from the target card. It's just a super quick, easy one to learn. There's a lot of variety with all the different packs that you can get. And it plays relatively quickly, so you can get a lot of plays in. This is, again, one of my favorites to bring to conventions and board game events. It's a great way to break the ice, to have some conversations, to get to know people. So Similo definitely deserves the number one spot with 26 plays in 2023. The last category on this list is number of hours played. I had a lot of games that were way up there with over four hours of play. So I've decided to break this down into two separate categories. The first of which being mid and filler weight games. But there were a lot of games even still. So the nominees for most played game based on the number of hours in our mid weight section are Cat in the Box, Medium, Paint the Roses, Splendor, Targi, and Unearth. The winner of this category with five hours over its competitors played at four hours each is Paint the Roses. This is another cooperative game with deduction elements. It's occurring to me now that even though I say I'm not a fan of cooperative games, I really do love a good cooperative game, but I'm very picky. In Paint the Roses, each player has a different combination of cards using the colors of flowers or the shapes of the bushes. As you go through, you're going to draft a tile and place it out. Every time a player places a tile, every player around the board is going to indicate using cubes how many matches it makes based on their required color and shape for the rose bush. This was another game that I discovered in 2023. I loved it so much that I had to buy it right away and I've played it a lot of times since. It's one of the few games that I have purchased over the years that I like to play back to back. <laughs> Normally I have one play and then I'm done, but with this one I always feel like, man, we could have done a little bit better, or I come up with new strategies. Having played it for five hours over the past year has been really fun, and I'm super looking forward to trying all of the modules that come in the expansion this coming year as well. So that is our winner of the midweek category for number of hours played, Paint the Roses. And for our chunky boys in the number of hours played category, we have nominees with four hours each of Black Angel, Carnegie, Great Western Trail, The Hunger, Praga Kaput Rebni, Rezarkana, Rococo Deluxe, and Wayfarers of the South Tigris. With a whopping six hours of play, my number one played game based on number of hours in 2023 is Rezarkana. Rezarkana is an amazingly tight engine building game. You're going to be collecting different artifacts, monuments, and places of power to build your engine, collecting the most resources, which will get you components that are worth certain numbers of points. It's a quick race to see who can get 10 points first. One of the reasons why I love this game so much is unlike other engine builders that often feel very bloated with 50, 60, hundreds of cards that you have to sort through, Rezarkana really takes that and pairs it down. Your personal deck of artifacts is either randomly held out or drafted, and it's only comprised of eight cards. It never expands other than the few monuments and places of power that are public for everybody. And because of the limited number of each cards you see every game, you are forced to adapt and change strategies from play to play. There are a healthy amount of cards that interact with other players, but not in a way that seems overly detrimental. The iconography is absolutely spectacular. Rezarkana is a great one to get into as far as engine builders go because you spend very little time learning the iconography and how to play the game and you can quickly move on to strategizing on what you want to do with your cards and how you can best manipulate your unique deck to work in your favor. This was not a game that I first played in 2023 but oh my word. <laughs> Has it been a pleasure to continue playing it? There are currently two expansions out with a third on the way for even more content, and it's been great still having this one in my collection to play and share with others throughout the year. So based on hours played, Rezarkana is my number one game from 2023. So there you have it. Those are my top games from 2023. Let me know in the comments down below what some of your favorite games and gaming memories were from the year, and if there are any other games you think I should check out for 2024. A quick thank you to our sponsor Noble Knight Games. If you're interested in trying out any of these games or many more, you can click on the link down in the description. Thank you as always for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye!